Good evening, my dear friends and colleagues. Today we will discuss one of the underdiagnosed uh, and underestimated conditions in nephrology, which is immunotactoid glomerulopathy. This is our agenda. Immunotactoid uh, glomerulopathy is characterized by microtubular deposition, microtubular deposits in the mesangium and glomerular capillary loops. From its name, immunotactoid is associated with microtubule depositions in the mesangium. Uh, the most important differential diagnosis for uh, immunotactoid comes with the fibrillary and uh, amyloidosis. But immunotactoid and fibrillary are distinguished from uh, amyloidosis by being negative for Congo red stain, negative for Congo red stain, which is very important in the diagnosis. Also, in immunotactoid characterized by large, large, thickened tubules. We'll discuss it later. So again, immunotactoid is characterized by microtubular deposition and lack or negative congruent stain. What about the epidemiology? The incidence for non-amyloid deposition, which include fibril fibrillary and immunotactoid, around for just 1%. 1%. But it is underestimated. Why it is underestimated? Because the diagnosis of immunotactoid depends mainly on electron microscopy. It is only diagnosed by electron microscopy. And the electron microscopy examination for renal biopsies are not routinely done. So we should know when to suspect when to suspect a diagnosis of fibrillary and immunotactoid. This is the most important point in our talk when you suspect a patient to have fibrillary and immunotactoid and then you can order for electron microscopy which will diagnose the associations immunotactoid glomerular nephritis is usually associated with this albara proteinemias usually it is associated with albara proteinemias is very important and characterized by monoclonal, monoclonal immunoglobulins. The immunoglobulin deposition are usually monoclonal, not polyclonal. In fibrillary, mostly it will be polyclonal, but in uh, immunotactoid, it will be either for kaba or lambda, mostly. The most common association with immunotactoid is with the hematological malignancies. Very important to exclude or to search for the hematological malignancy. It is present, hematological malignancies are present in around 38 or nearly 40% of cases of immunotactoid glomerulopathy. 40% of immunotactoid patients will have a hematological malignancies. The most common is CLL chronic lymphocytic leukemia in 19%, lymphoblasmocytic lymphoma in 13%, and multiple myeloma in 13%. So again, you should exclude hematological malignancies in cases of immunotactoid glomerulopathy. The clinical manifestation, this is very important. When I suspect patient to have immunotactoid, the mean age for immunotactoid is from 55 to 60. Usually, most of the cases are more than, are older than 50 years of age. But there are some exceptions, of course, but most of the cases are more than 50 years of age. The most common presentation is nephrotic syndrome. This is very important, and nephrotic range of proteinuria. Nephrotic syndrome. So when I... The main presentation, don't forget that, the main presentation of immunotactoid is nephrotic syndrome or nephrotic range proteinuria. Some cases show microscopic hematuria, and in most of the cases, usually they have renal impairment, renal with variable degrees, renal impairment. So the most common presentation 
when I have a patient with nephrotic syndrome, there is, if they had microscopic hematuria and renal impairment, then I should put immunotactide in my differential diagnosis. This is very important. The extra renal manifestations in immunotactide are not common. It is not like amyloidosis or systemic vasculitis. It is mainly affecting the kidney. The pathology. This is very important, of course, to reach our diagnosis. So I have a patient with nephrotic syndrome, renal impairment, then I ask it for a biopsy. What will make me suspicious to immunotactoid glomerulopathy? The two most common presentations or the most common pathologies we find in immunotactoid is membranous, membranous nephropathy, or membranoproliferative or mesangiocabillary. So when I have a patient with nephrotic syndrome and the biopsy revealed membranous, and mostly it will be atypical membranous, atypical membranous, or MBGN, or MBGN, then I should suspect immunotactite. In immune histochemistry or immune fluorescence will show deposits of IgG and complement, but the main diagnosis or the diagnosis of immunotactoid depends only on electron microscopy. You cannot diagnose a patient with immunotactoid except after electron microscopy examination. What is the characteristic find findings? Most importantly, to build microtubular structures with a diameter greater than 30 nanometer. Very important. Again, this is the most important note. The diagnosis of immunotactoid depends only on the presence of microtubules with a diameter more than 30 nanometer in electron microscopy. The deposition is usually organized in a parallel fashion. Also, we can find inclusions, intracytoplasmic, intracytoplasmic inclusions in the circulating B lymphocytes in, in patients with CLL or lymphoma. The most important is electron microscopy. This is a picture, electron microscopy picture showing microtubule deposition, microtubules deposition in a parallel or in the sub-epithelial space. A more magnified picture from Renal Pathology Atlas in the American Journal of Kidney Disease showing tubules of a, a diameter of around 50 nanometers arranged parallel with electron microscopy. Again, Diagnosis of immunotactoid relies on electron microscopy. I cannot diagnose except with electron microscopy. When I should suspect a patient with nephrotic syndrome and the renal biopsy revealed atypical membranous or MBGN, usually with immunotactoid, there is monotypic deposits or monoclonal deposits. In fibrillary, usually it is polyclonal, but in immunotactoid, it is monoclonal. Of course, we should, our renal biopsies should be stained or examined with for anti kappa and anti lambda to know whether our patient have a monoclonal or polyclonal. Patient with immunotactoid, as we said, we should exclude lymphoproliferative disorders, also hepatitis C and HI are very common associations. Again, we only diagnose by electron microscopy in patients with atypical membranes or MBGN, and we should exclude lymphoproliferative diseases, hepatitis C and HIV. Outcome, fibrillary glomerulopathy, fibrillary, which is the most common differential diagnosis fibrillary is associated with end-stage renal disease in 50% of patients. But the prognosis with immunotactoid 
is usually better than fibrillary. So immunotactide has a slightly better prognosis than fibrillary glomerulopathy. And the treatment is mainly directed against the underlying hematological malignancy. It is mainly for the hematological malignancy, the underlying hematological malignancy, as we said, for example, CLL or multiple myeloma or lymphoplasmocytic lymphoma. And this will lead to remission of the nephrotic syndrome and remission of the patient. Renal transplant is done, have been done in few patients, but it was associated with recurrence. This is the most important table for differential diagnosis between amyloid, fibrillary, and immunotactite. You should know this table by heart. The main, the main differentiating point between amyloidosis and fibrillary with immunotactite that in amyloidosis, there is positive congruent stain. This is very important from the start. Right. The electron microscopy examination will reveal what in amyloidosis and fibrillary, the deposition or the structure is fibrils, but in immunotactoid, it is microtubules or microtubular structure. The diameter is very important. It is smallest or least with amyloidosis with a diameter of 8 to 15 nanometer. In fibrillary, usually it is from 15 to 30, and in microtubules or micro immunotactide, it is more than 30 nanometer. The pattern of deposition, it is usually parallel in cases of immunotactide, but it is random in amyloidosis and fibrillary. The immunoglobulin deposition, it is usually monoclonal with amyloidosis and monoclonal with immunotactoid, and mostly it is polyclonal with fibrillary. So it is monoclonal in immunotactoid. The light microscopy finding, as we said in immunotactoid, it is mainly atypical membranous or MBGN. This, the same for fibrillary, mainly MBGN and membranous. And in amyloidosis, usually deposition and the nodular pattern. The renal presentation in all of them is nephrotic syndrome, renal impairment. Nephrotic syndrome, some degree of hematuria and renal impairment. Extra renal manifestations, as we said, there is systemic, of course, with amyloidosis, systemic deposition and fibrillary. Some cases of pulmonary hemorrhage, some cases, not all cases. And in immunotactoid, it is usually uncommon. But the association with lymphoproliferative disorder is very common, as we said, in around 40% of cases of immunotactoid. It is rare in fibrillary. And in, in amyloidosis, there is some association uh, or overlapping with multiple myeloma. The treatment for amyloidosis, mainly milfalan, dexamethasone, and other recent uh, drugs or regimen for fibrillary. Uh, corticosteroids and we can use cyclophosphamide but in immunotactoid the treatment is directed mainly for the underlying hematological malignancy 